thing about you, Jimmy, when I bring it up, I was like, just tell him something to make him like me. And he just said, I'm from fucking Modesto. Whoops! Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, you guys are the only people that can compete with Modesto when it comes to fucking tweakerdom in this fucking town. Like, you don't fucking understand. Okay, raise your hand if you know somebody whose grandma's name Crystal. <laughs> Nine people just rose their fucking hand. You guys have old tweakers the same way that the East Coast has old money. I love it. Modesto's like that too. And people are like, you know what, Jimmy? Modesto's where meth was invented. You know that, Jimmy? Modesto's where meth was invented. I was like, no, it wasn't actually. It was invented by the Nazis in Germany. However, that was perfected by the Nazis in Modesto. So, uh, I'd like to take a second to brag, everybody. It has been seven years since I've had a drink of alcohol. But I still smoke a shit ton of fucking weed. Yeah, because I'm an AA, not NA. And, uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but did you know that NA and AA people don't get along? Yeah, they just like our radio for radio shit. They fucking hate each other. Like, they just sit there and events staring at each other from across the room like this the whole fucking time. They fucking love each other. And it's crazy, because every once in a while I'll have to do an NA event, and I'll go there and I'm like, hey, I still smoke weed. And they're like, you know, Jimmy, you're not fucking clean. You don't work the steps, Jimmy. You're not fucking clean. You don't follow the program. You're not clean. You don't have any clean time, Jimmy. You're not clean. You gotta get back your shit, because you're not clean. And I'm just like, whoa! You are real fucking judgmental when somebody needs to suck dick for crank. <laughs> but I'm meddling. I met a lady at an NA event and she came up to me afterwards and she was like, you know, Jimmy, you don't understand addiction. You don't understand alcoholism. A person that is an addict has an emotional hole inside of them. They try and fill up with drugs and booze and more drugs and more booze until they realize they're going to kill themselves unless they fix themselves. Then she looked me dead in the eye and said, my new addiction is dead. <laughs> and I was like, what an awesome way to fill up that fucking hole. You think she hits that rock bottom over and she finds herself in an alley somewhere sucking dick to get more dick? <laughs> I don't know. I had a rock bottom moment once and it did not involve me sucking dick actually. Um, I was in San Francisco, I was trying to smoke a bowl. It was hella fucking windy and I was trying all the fucking tricks to get the bowl lit. You know, the fucking cup in face the lid. You know, this one, the whole deal, right? I could not get the shit lit. So I fucking tried to duck between his little crevice between his building and his fence. And I was like going like this, and I was like trying to get the bowl lit, and I just could not. And like, I was just going farther and farther down this fucking little thing. And I remember I was stepping over all kinds of dirty shit, like fucking dirty needles, and like napkins that people use as toilet paper, and like used condoms, all kinds of gross shit, right? And I'm getting down here, and like I'm trying to cuff it, and like trying to hit it, and I can't, and I'm like ducking lower, and lower, and lower, and I'm like right here. And they say every addict, when they have what they call a woman clarity, they see themselves from a third person perspective. And for a brief moment, I saw myself from the sidewalk, down this little crack, trying to get high, just like any other piece of shit in San Francisco. And I was fucking appalled. It disgusted me what I fucking saw. And I was like, is this rock bottom? And then, in that instant, I was back in my own person, and I looked a little farther down, and I saw that there was a guy down farther with a needle sticking out of his neck, and his pants pulled down around his ankles, and he's kissing straight up in the air, back down onto his own chest. And I was like, that's fucking rock bottom. <laughs> drinking and quit doing drugs, you have to learn how to do everything all over again. Which is completely true. Like, I had to learn how to fall asleep and not pass out. <laughs> like, seriously, I had to learn how to do everything. I, you know what the hardest thing to learn how to do again was? I had to learn how to fuck again. Okay, let me back up a little bit. I not, not learn how to fuck, but when you 
drink? Like, do you understand how easy it is to get laid when you drink? It's fucking like playing Madden on fucking easy. It's fucking ridiculous. Because when you drink and somebody else drinks, all you gotta do is walk up and be like, Woo! Let's have some shots and see who we wake up in the morning. Woo! <laughs> but when you don't drink, you can't walk up to a chick and say like, Hey, why don't you have some shots and see where you wake up in the morning? and fucking listen to the fucking bullshit they talk about about their fucking, some bitch at the fucking job that she fucking hates, or her fucking mom, or her fucking dad, or that fucking motherfucker that she used to fucking date me whenever you act up you remind her of. <laughs> and personally, honestly, I wish I could just look somebody dead in the eyes and say, you wanna fuck? But when you don't drink, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> But I am glad to say that I can do almost all of the same shit I used to do before when I used to drink. Like, I can still get up on stage and do karaoke. Yeah. Right? I was at a party not too long ago. There were a bunch of people jumping off the roof in their underwear into the pool, and I fucking did it completely sober. Yeah. I still go down on fat chicks. I'm back, baby! <laughs> 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 Actually, that's not true. There's one fucking thing I can't do anymore now that I quit drinking. And uh, that's a fucking jack-in-the-box motherfucking taco. <laughs> when you fucking are drunk at 2 in the morning, you know what that is? That's fucking garbage cat food in a fucking tortilla. So, uh, did you guys have dinner here? You know what I'm talking about? with like a cop would come to your classroom and teach you about drugs. And you would be like, kids, this is an eight ball of cocaine. Don't you ever, 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 ever pay more than $150 for that. And then he gave us a number to his guy. And when I called it, it was my dad. I used to say $100 in that joke, but inflation, you know? Okay. Inflation's a motherfucker, right? Who would have fucking thought that during the pandemic it would cost me 30 fucking dollars for my fat ass to eat Taco Bell? And now that the pandemic's over, it still costs 30 fucking dollars for me to eat fucking Taco Bell. Who would have fucking thought? That's not inflation, that's my fat ass fucking saying I will pay 30 dollars for Taco Bell, right? Okay, you know what inflation is? Inflation is what a fucking craft beer used to sell a six pack for 9.99 and now you get four of those motherfuckers. Alright, way to fucking dead end as a good step in the fucking uh, new joke. Fantastic! Alright, cool. Uh, Alright, cool. So, uh, has anybody here ever been fired from a job? Cool. Uh, I got fired from a pizza place one time because I was so fucking hot. And this guy's combo was so fucking good. Did I pull the sneaker slice through? You know what that is? That's when you cut a little sliver of pizza off of somebody's pizza and you can eat it. Then you shake the pizza inside the box and it all slide together and it looks like a whole pizza in it. So I did that and this guy called the restaurant saying that look, he knew that I ate a piece of his pizza because of pepperoni thing on it. And I was like, what kind of fucking tweakers count pepperonis? I got fired from a telemarketing job one time because I was super fucking bored. And I decided to start taking all my phone calls talking like this. <laughs> and I was setting up witness for this company called Steven Sanders and Associates. <laughs> and I called this lady named Susan. And I was like, hi Susan, this is Steven from Steven Sanders and Associates. How are you this afternoon? And Susan set an appointment because she also talked like this. <laughs> and they fired me because they thought I was fucking with her. <laughs> and I'm like, this is some fucking bullshit. Where's my last fucking check, motherfuckers? <laughs> but this is the thing. That was nine years ago, this month. And it was 
was a blessing in disguise, because you know what? That was the last fucking job I ever had punching some other motherfucker's side clock. That's the last time I ever worked for another fucking person. I swore to my fucking life on fucking God and everything above me, or whatever I fucking believe in. I fucking swore I would never work for another motherfucker, and I'm going to make my own goddamn money telling jokes. And you know what? It's been nine fucking years, and there's been times... There has been times when I've been like five minutes away from having to get a job, but it hasn't happened. And I fucking recently did a show at Bass Lake Resort when they opened back up. And I went in there. And do you guys, is there anybody, is there, are there any Karens here? Yeah. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, a fucking, they're like a fucking, they're basically a cunt, right? Um, is your name Karen? Is that how it is? It's like, it's like, you're just, you're just proud to be a Karen? I'm not, oh wait, you said Karen or Karen? A Karen. Oh no, I'm not a Karen. Oh, uh, okay. I was like, that's a weird thing, like, fuck you, I would talk to your manager, comedy guy, I'm a Karen. <laughs> like, that's what I thought you were going with that. But there was this lady in the resort when I was checking in, right, and she had this can I talk to your manager haircut, you know what I'm talking about? Where it's all shaved short in the back and it's like long and it curls around like the Rams helmet right here. <laughs> Right, and she was fucking yelling at the girl at the counter, and it was so embarrassing because she was like, I want to talk to a manager. I've never stayed in a resort that didn't have free towels and shampoo. I want my whole weekend cop. This is fucking bullshit. Let me talk to the manager. Let me talk to the manager. Let me talk to the manager. So they finally brought up the manager, right? And she had an even bigger, can I talk to your manager haircut? Oh. Like, this shit was exquisite. It was all fucking dome, like an astronaut wife's head. And, when it, and it curled down and it made like a face mask on for her. And it was shaved with just two lines over her. Just so you know, she cut a motherfucker. She had to. And she came over and she how can I help you? What's your problem here? You got a problem with one of my employees? And I was like, holy fuck, I recognize that motherfucking voice. And she tore into this fucking chair. She's like, you need Get out of my resort. I'm not gonna like test it to you talking to my customers like this and my employees. I will not lie about you talk to my staff like this. Your whole week gets calm and you can fucking leave. Get the fuck out of here. And she threw the lady's towels at her, told her to leave. And I was like, holy fuck, I know. And you know what? Fucking she turned around and you know what her name tag said? Sarah. Right, said Susan. Susan! And I was like, holy fuck, that's Susan! <laughs> And I guess the point of the story is, is if you're ever fucking playing a Pokemon game of life and you're facing a Karen, a Susan card will beat it every fucking time. <laughs> She's working miracles with everybody. <laughs> so, uh, I love you guys to tell, but I'm all fucked up. And, uh, yeah, well, part of getting better is fucking elevated, right? So I'm in therapy, and I have discovered that my therapeutic experience consists of me asking a stranger, is this normal? And then they say, no. <laughs> so let me ask you guys this. I recently had a lady stay the night at my house for the first time. And I have a, I have a big 100 pound black lab that sleeps across the foot of my bed, and she thought it was weird that the dog slept the like that with us today. Is that weird? No. Thanks, I appreciate that, because I'll admit it was a little weird when we were fucking and I used the dog as leverage. <laughs> and I got a little chihuahua as a freak and started licking everybody's asses. I was like, where's the cat with a scratchy tongue? Let's do this! <laughs> oh, thank you guys for laughing at the dog fucking jokes, I appreciate that. Um, I know Tommy back there is wondering where the bar for the show was going to be. Apparently he's dog fussy, Tommy. Um, so, uh, but, um, she tried to gaslight me too. Which I thought was fucking an amazing thing. So this is what happened. After we were done fucking and we were spooning, right? It was completely quiet. All of a sudden the silence was broken by a... She farted right on my fucking dick. She cross-dusted me. And then, she tried to be all, was that you or the dog, babe? And I was like, I know it was you because I felt the wind. <laughs> Plus it smells like a crunch wrap, and my dog doesn't eat people food. 
And then she did this fucking move with the blanket where she twists up and does this thing. Where she rolls up the burrito tuck roll move with the blanket. She got like a good solid four twists, had the entire fucking blanket. I had this much blanket to stay warm with. I swear to God I've had bigger hits of asses than this piece of blanket I had. I was all spooning with the chihuahua for work. I was all hoo 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 And then when we woke up in the morning, she wanted to fuck around first thing in the morning. Which is great. Unless you have Taco Bell for dinner at 6 a.m. That was the most uncomfortable case of bubble guts I've ever had in my life. Because this is the thing, when somebody's blowing you at 6 in the morning, you can't fart right in their face. Because first off, you're not even sure it's going to be a fart. And two, if it is a fart that's this close to a blanket, and everybody knows that that costs extra. So she's blowing me, right? And I'm like, okay, you know what I'll do? I'll get out of this uncomfortable situation. I'll come real fast. I'll just make her think she's the fucking throat girl. I'll come real fast to the great. But here's the thing. You can't hold in and push out with the same muscle. <laughs> try it right now in your chair. Hold it in and then try and push it out. No. If fucking you feel it in your fucking throat. It doesn't fucking work. So I'm sitting here like, Ugh. I 
And then I looked over and my soul was riding in the passenger seat. And it looked at me, looked at my arm, looked at me like, ugh. And it disappeared. And then the car magically fishtailed and the back end of the car hit the tree and not me. And the airbag went off and broke my nose. And fucking I lived to tell the tale. That's right, I'm still here, yeah. for some weird reason. Um, and like, big jokes must be told, apparently, but, um... So, after the wreck, I got out of the wreck, and I'm walking towards the end of the side of the freeway, and a guy had already pulled over, he was like, came running over to me, he was like, hey man, I just called an ambulance, they're on their way, sit on the tailgate of my truck and just wait for them. And, uh, so I'm sitting on the tailgate, and he says to me after a couple seconds, uh, looking me up and down, he's like, hey man, don't look at your arm. <laughs> And my arm was twisted like this, the bone was sticking out. And I have no idea why I did this to this day, but I just grabbed my hand and twisted everything back into place. And the bone went back inside my arm, and it hurt so bad that I just started throwing up all over the place. And he was like, I can't believe you just did that. And then he started throwing up all over the place. And that's when the highway patrol showed up. And they thought that he was a drunk driver, so they started giving him the roadside sobriety test immediately. Which was awesome, because that gave me a chance to hide my weed. So, I had that surgery, like look at this shit, I don't have a radius bone, it's a titanium rod right there. And I had that surgery, they're wheeling me in to have surgery. And the anesthesiologist said to me, hey, they told me that you're a stand-up comedian, can you tell me a joke right now? And I was like, well, Doc, to be honest with you, you asking me to tell you a joke right now is a lot like me asking you to do the surgery for free. <laughs> and he looked at my chart and said, you're on Medi-Cal, tell me a fucking joke. 